I have to admit <clears throat> that as an artist, I always liked the medium of exhibition. My reflection upon reality were expressed by <clears throat> minimal, sometimes ephemeral objects, installations, but its proper and full meaning was not present for the viewer, beholder, as an understandable communication. I always claimed that the placement of objects within the exhibition is a reason to start discussion, to give interviews, to explain in person uh, the context of the piece itself, and therefore to draw a wider perspective for understanding. The objects of art I have been creating functioned like evidence gathered by an investigator. Then I became a tutor at the Academy of Art in Szczecin. Uh, I moved from Krakow, where I was a part of a local art community, and went to a city that for Poles is situated somewhere there, out in the periphery. I, I moved to the city uh, where there was no visible, strong art community, where there was no neo-avant-garde legacy. In 2010, a brand new academy was established and young or middle-aged artists were invited to teach there and indirectly to create a community in the field of contemporary art that had not existed in this nearly half million populated city. As a tutor, I discovered that didactics, pedagogy, is a very important aspect in terms of my art practice. I also started to be more focused on introducing art practice in the local context. And on the other hand, as I am very interested in post-colonialism, I started to look for a wider context for locality. In a serendipitous way, I got fascinated with Latin American countries specifically because of their economical dependency on USA and their neo-avant-garde neo artists' distinct approach to conceptualism in the 60s and 70s, which was very much focused on how the information can be distributed beyond the official channels. As Louis Kamnitzer claims in his book, the conceptual art in South America was very much influenced with the idea of pedagogy to educate the exploited social classes. Few weeks ago, I realized in Szczecin, in a local off space maintained by the students of our academy, an exhibition titled Recollection of the Last Exhibition, where I materialized objects that could be used as a starting point for my explanations, for my descriptions of exploitation of the global south and the alternative models that appear in Latin America in opposition to neo-colonial power. During the opening, uh, I didn't appear as an artist. There was no artist uh, actually uh, appearing during the opening. I appeared as a curator, a director of the center, an institution I had created with my partner, Malgorzata Mazur, in 2014. And as a curator, I started to explain. The center, Centrum, is an institution, or an anti-institution that imitates the institutional activity. Its research uh, and exhibition program is focused on the relation between the peripheries and the center in the context of economical and cultural dependency. Centrum seeks the threads from the past and tries to reconstruct it in a new context for better understanding in order to create a very distinct 
art historical narration of the peripheral world. We create publications, we build collection, we take care of the soil and plant vegetables and collect fruits. To reimburse involvement of artists, theoreticians uh, from various fields uh, in the program of the center, we had created the capital of uh, the center. It consists of 66 golden bars made of cardboard, painted with golden spray. And in order to boost the value of this artificial gold, I had used my symbolic capital as an artist and during the exhibition at Deutsche Bank Kunsthalle in Berlin, to which I was invited, uh, I installed for three months uh, uh, all the whole capital in two museums in Berlin, uh, at Neues Museum and Bode Museum in Berlin. And now we can reimburse persons working on behalf of uh, Centrum with an object that is either an artwork or a museum specimen. The first two golden bars were sent to Buenos Aires to Roberto Jacobi and Eduardo Costa, who along with Raul Escari made in Buenos Aires in 1966 a happening that was later titled Happening for a Dead Boar. Probably it is the first art piece that existed and was materialized only as a newspaper information. Jacobi, Costa and Escari influenced by Oscar Masotta, prepared a textual and photographic description of a specific happening. Then they sent it to various magazines and the journalists wrote articles and spread information about this specific art event in which famous people took part. But of course it didn't ever happen. The reconstruction that was made uh, in Centrum, as a first exhibition in our institution, was divided into two phases. Firstly, I was interviewed on 9th of June 2017 by a journalist from a local radio, Radio Szczecin. I was speaking about Centrum and its goals and about the idea of the original happening for a dead boar how it refers to the distribution of information by media, uh, to the censorship and distortion of information. Then I gave a report on the reconstruction that took place in Centrum, allotment garden in Szczecin. 
I said that a lot of people came interested with a title because boars are very unwelcomed in allotments because they destroy the plantations. People discussed <clears throat> the meaning of the original piece and were very interested in its social political aspect. One lady uh, even told us a story uh, when she visited Argentina in the 60s to visit her sister. And of course, all of it, uh, as reported in the local radio station, was fake and didn't ever happen. It was only a report on the perfect event, on how we would like it to look like. The second phase was a real event a month later. We wanted to see how it will actually look like. Uh, only 13 people came. Two of them came from other allotments, two others from city. We didn't know them. And others were friends, students, people we know. The reconstruction was presented to the audience in a form of a radio drama. First, there was an interview from Radio Szczecin. You can see here, it was all broadcasted with these speakers. So it was uh, first uh, in this radio drama, there was an interview from Radio Szczecin, then the article from El Mundo magazine from 1966 that was translated to Polish, was read. Probably, uh, I'm sure about it, it's the, the only translation to Polish of this text. Afterwards, there were the audio messages from Roberto Jacobi and Eduardo Costa. And Eduardo, for example, was saying in his message that he's very happy that the happening that didn't happen in Argentina in 1966 will not happen again. In the collection of uh, Centrum can be situated uh, in the institution or outside the institution. It can be appropriated from other institutions even without their knowledge. One of the first acquisitions in the Centrum's collection was stone collected from the land art piece Spiral Jetty by Robert Smithson. Two years uh, later, after the stone was collected, uh, <laughs> Two years later, the stone was thrown into the meadow near to the Polish-Belarusian border and is permanently situated there, but still is a part of a collection. In 2014, we have been traveling across USA. Just before departure for the road trip, we have visited the Jewish Museum where there was a reconstruction of an exhibition primary structures that took place in the same institution in 1966. The reconstructed exhibition involved a model of a building in which Jewish Museum is located with models of sculptures presented during primary structures exhibition in 1966. After arriving to the other side of the country, we met with our friend in San Francisco, Andy Fogt. He told us that we should definitely go to see the exhibition in Jewish Museum when we would go back to New York. We told him that we had already seen it and that it was fantastic. Then it appeared that Andy was responsible for making all the models of the minimalist sculptures and that he gifted us with a model of the cryosphere that Robert Smithson did in 1966 and which is now a part of our collection. Centrum and its collection is like a mimicry. It imitates, sometimes acts like a parasite, parasite or collaborates in a symbiosis. Both objects already mentioned along with few other specimens were exhibited in this museum. Uh, in the cabinets were specimens from ancient Greece were exhibited. Uh, 
There are some items in the collection that don't have a material substance. For example, it is the accidental reconstruction of the happening Inversión de Escena that Chilean art group De Colectivo de Acciones de Arte made in 1979 and which took place in front of the Museum of Fine Arts in Santiago de Chile. This connection is further performed by closing the entrance to the museum by covering the facade with a large white cloth. I have, I have to uh, add that it's a time where there was still a dictatorship of Pinochet in, Santiago, in Chile. And the specimen from our collection is, uh, is this photograph taken by Ricardo Vasquez in front of the same museum. We found it accidentally. And in this photograph, we see a gas um, trucks that, uh, that has the same color, uh, blue and white, as in the original happening. And they are um, in front of the same museum. Actually, they are in the same place where the original milk trucks were located. And in this accidental reconstruction, the truck is duplicated by an algorithm. And eventually, we see four trucks. So, so this is the specimen. Education. On October uh, last year, we realized workshops with the students of Dutch Art Institute. We used the rules of the action game on Morals Hill that Oscar Hansen with his students realized in 1971. Uh, the rules were that two teams, uh, one labeled as spiritual and other team labeled as rational, were competing against each other using um, fabric and sticks on this hill that we see in the photographs, and using only a, a visual language to, 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 to establish a communication. This is the, the use of these uh, rules by the students uh, of Dutch Art Institute. And on May this year, uh, we repeated the reconstruction of the action with students of Academy of Art in Szczecin and Academy of Fine Arts in Warsaw. This time, we made the action in Schumin, where there is a house, summer house of Oscar Hansen. It's, it's very interesting that in both reenactments, but actually, it's just the use of the rules. Uh, it's, it's not the reenactment. We uh, there was this uh, narration that appeared among the participants that involved very much the tension, the col oh well, the colonial tension. Okay. So it was both uh, reconstructions were very much influenced by colonialism, post-colonialism uh, thinking. It's very interesting. And in both situations, the rational group was very much into competing, and the spiritual group was very much into establishing a connection between the two groups. It's also very interesting. And th this year we we have established a collaboration with Munandi Art Studio in Nbeke in Zambia. We got fascinated with their project from 2015, uh, where they invited Zambian artists uh, that during two weeks discussed the influence of Western contemporary art language, specifically conceptualism, on Zambian art scene. 
and created sculptures made out of recycled materials. We decided to establish a collaboration that would involve Zambian group of artists and students and artists from Szczecin. And probably it would take a form of a game. Uh, first, Zambian artists will send a photo of installation that they will prepare together. And then the group gathered in our institution in the allotment garden would respond with an installation. And then it will be sent to Monandi, and they will transform the previous installation sculpture or create a new one. And after sending to the center a photo documentation of this new sculpture, we will respond to it with a transformation of our installation or with a creation of a new one, and so on. And the game can last three, four days or a couple of years. Thank you.